my name is Stephanie Carroll and I write historical women's fiction. I have written a novel called A White Room and I'm currently seeking representation for. Uh, today I'm going to do a little uh, segment that I've just created now called What's New at the Library? which was basically inspired by my cat not being done at the groomers and me having 30 extra minutes so I went to the library and I stood around and looked at you know the new books section and just couldn't help but get some books even though I already have like three that I'm reading at home so today we are going to talk about two new books that are out and that I thought looked interesting and that you might think are interesting if you like the kind of fiction that I'm into um, the first one is The Cove by Ron Rash, who is the author of uh, best-selling novel Serena. That's the first one. The second one is The Flight of Gemma Hardy by Margot Livesey. You guys may have heard of me uh, talking about Margot Livesey before because I often compare my first novel, A White Room, to one of her novels, uh, Eva Moves the Furniture. But I'm not going to talk about Eva Moves the Furniture. I'm going to talk about The Flight of Gemma Hardy, which I've actually seen getting a lot of good press, so I think it should be good. But first, let's talk about The Cove. Obviously, I haven't read these yet. I just got these at the library, so I'm not going to be able to give you a expert having read the book review, but I'm just kind of letting you know that they're here and what they're about. Okay, so The Cove um, sounds very interesting. Deep in the rugged Appalachians of North Carolina lies The Cove, a dark, forbidding place where spirits and fetches wander and even the light fears to travel. Or so the townsfolk of Mars Hill believe, just as they know that Laurel Shelton, the lonely young woman who lives within its shadows, is a witch. Alone except for her brother, Hank, newly returned from the trenches of France, she aches for her life to begin. Then it happens. A stranger appears, carrying nothing but a beautiful silver flute, and a note explaining that his name is Walter. He is mute, and is bound for New York. Laurel finds him in the woods, nearly strung to death by yellow jackets, stung to death by yellow jackets, and nurses him back to health. As the days pass, Walter slips easily into life in the cove and into Laurel's heart, bringing her the only real happiness she has ever known. But Walter harbors a secret that could destroy everything, and danger is closer than you know. Through the war, though the war in Europe is near its end, patriotic fervor flourishes thanks to the likes of Chauncey Feith, an ambitious young army recruiter who stokes fear and outrage throughout the country. County. In a time of uncertainty, when fear and ignorance reign, Laurel and Walter will discover that love may not be enough to protect them. This lyrical, heart-rending tale, as mesmerizing it is, as its award-winning predecessor, Serena, shows once again this masterful novelist at the height of his powers. Ron Rash is the author of 2009 Penn Faulkner finalist and the New York Times bestselling novel, Serena. In addition to three other prize-winning novels, One Foot in Eden, Saints at the River, and The World Made Straight, four collections of poems and four collections of stories, among them Burning Bright, which won 2010 Frank O'Connor International Short Story Award, and Chemistry and Other Stories, which was a finalist for the 2007 Penn Faulkner Award. Twice the recipient, recipient of the O. Henry Prize, he teaches at Western Carolina University. This guy is busy. That's a lot of stuff. So it's got um, a whole bunch of blurbs on the back as well. Uh, Colin McCann, National Book Award winning author of Let the Great World Spin, says, Set during World War I, The Cove is a novel that speaks intimately to today's politics. Beautifully written, tough, raw, uncompromising, entirely new. Ron Rash is a writer's writer who writes for others. Jennifer Hay, author of Faith, says, I wish the whole world spoke the way Ron Rash's characters do. Read him for his poetry and great humanity. Just read him. Jonathan Evishan, uh, author of West of Here, 
Warning, if you're going to begin reading The Cove, be prepared to miss your appointment and cancel your dinner plans because it's one of those books that grabs you from the first page and won't let you go. Rash is a hypnotist, a magician, a conjurer, and that rarest of wordsmiths, a masterful storyteller. And finally, Daniel Woodrell, author of Winter's Bone. Ron Rash uses language which, with such apparently effortless skill that it is as though he found words in his barn as a child and has been training them to fit his needs ever since. There's not much he doesn't know about humans in turmoil or his region, a place where nothing ever changes until a sudden it does and often too much. Rash throws a big shadow now and it's only going to get bigger and soon. So that looks pretty good. Um, I think it sounds very interesting. It's set around the time period that I love, World War I. I write more of turn of the century, early 1900s. World War I's kind of there. Um, and it's got a chick that people think is a witch, which I, I like the sound of that. Um, okay, so The Flight of Jim Hardy. When her widower father drowns at sea, Gemma Hardy is taken from her native Iceland to Scotland to live with her kind uncle and his family. But the death of her doting guardian leaves Gemma under the care of her restful aunt, and its soon resentful aunt. And it soon becomes clear that she is nothing more than an unwelcome guest at U House. When she receives a scholarship to a private school, 10-year-old Gemma believes she's found the perfect solution and eagerly sets out again to a new home. However, at Claypool, she finds herself treated as an unpaid servant. To Gemma's delight, the school goes bankrupt, and she takes a job as an au pairi. No, au I can't say that. Au, au pairi on the Orkney Islands. The remote Blackbird Hall belongs to Mr. Sinclair, a London businessman. His eight-year-old niece is Gemma's charge. Even before their first meeting, Gemma is, like everyone on the island, intrigued by Mr. Sinclair. Rich, by Gemma's standards, single, flying in from London when he pleases, Hugh Sinclair fills the house with life. An unlikely couple, the two are drawn to each other, but Gemma's biggest trial is about to begin. A journey of passion and betrayal, redemption and discovery that will lead her to a life of which she's never dreamed. Set in Scotland and Iceland in the 1950s and 60s, The Flight of Gemma Hardy, a captivating homage to Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre, is a sweeping saga that resurrects the timeless themes of the original, but is destined to become a classic all on its own. Margot Livesey is the acclaimed author of the novels The House on Fortune Street, Banishing Verona, Eva Moves the Furniture, The Missing World, Criminals, and Homework. Her work has appeared in The New Yorker, Vogue, and The Atlantic, and she is the recipient of grants from both the National Endowment for the Arts and the Guggenheim Foundation. The House on Fortune Street won the 2009 L.L. Winship Penn New England Award. Livesey was born in Scotland and grew up on the edge of Highlands. She lives in the Boston area and is the distinguished writer-in-residence at Emerson College. Also another busy writer. So these uh, two books are definitely from writers who have already proven to be very good at what they do. Um, let me just read you some of the blurbs from the back. From David Walbaruski, author of the story of Edgar Sawtell, The Flight of Jim Hardy is the portrait of a delicate iron-willed girl, an orphan and a heroine in the grand tradition. The writing is at once wholehearted and razor sharp, but here, as in all of Livesey's novels, the real treasure is her gift for exploring the un unreduced human psyche with all its radiant contradictions, mercurial insights, and desperate generosities. Gemma is real, it's as simple as that. And through her eyes, we see step by step what it means to stay determined in the face of the world's ceaseless ambiguities. What it means, in other words, to take possession of one's own life. From Karen Joy Fowler, author of the Jane Austen Book Club and Wit's End. The fabulous Margot Livesey has written a book steeped in remote landscapes, secret histories, and great love. Orphan Gemma Hardy, or Gemma is a, yeah, Gemma Hardy is a modern day Jane Eyre. Thoroughly engaging, embracingly unsentimental. The prose is meticulous, the tale we're transporting. Trust me, you will love this book. From Andrea Barrett, author of Ship Fever and Servants of the Map. 
Enchanting from the first page to the last, reading the flight of Gemma Hardy reminded me of the way we fall into the certain novels when we're younger, with utter absorption and concentration, the outside world disappearing entirely as the spell of a fictional world takes hold. That's how strong and convincing this novel's voice is. Within just a few pages, I was, I was helplessly in its grip. I stayed up too late. I forgot things I was supposed to do. All I wanted to do was follow Jimma's path where next it led. And finally from Audrey Neffinger, author of The Time Traveler's Wife and her fearful symmetry, The Flight of Jimma Hardy is an inventive reimagining of Jane Eyre. The feisty Jimma is a delightful character in her own right, and it was a pleasure to follow her adventures. I'm excited with uh, Audrey Neffinger doing a, a blurb because I just recently did a vlog reviewing her book, The Time Traveler's Wife, and Audrey Neffinger is like one of my all-time favorite authors. So this uh, it's a lot of good blurbs. You can see why authors get their blurbs because when you find a couple that you're like, ooh, I love that author, it looks good. Okay, so those um, are my What's New at the Library books that I found. And I hope that was sort of informative and something that might help you decide what you're going to get the next time you go to the library. Thank you for watching my vlog. I try to post new vlogs every weekend and new blogs every Wednesday. You can learn more about me and my fiction, which is in kind of the same areas as these two books. Women's fiction, historical. Uh, at www.stephaniecarroll.net. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.